So I want to talk about behavioral therapy because I think a lot of us don't know much about this and what that means. And I think a lot of clinicians don't have time to explain that to parents. So this is a really important part of therapy. For these kids, it's really important to create a routine. So making sure that they know breakfast is at this time, you go to school at this time, you do your homework at this time. Setting out a standard routine so that they can follow that and not be so easily distracted. Making sure that they're organized, putting their backpack in the same place every day, not giving them too many distractions. So the TV should be off when they're doing their homework. I know now that, that schools are um, using computers for homework, but um, limiting what can be done on the computer during that time. I know there's some parental controls and things like that. Limiting their choices. If you have a six-year-old and you open her closet and say, what do you want to wear today? <coughs> and she has ADHD. She, I mean, she's going to take an hour figuring that out. She's going to try on a million things. That's just not ideal for these kids. So really just giving them the option, but maybe laying out two outfits and saying, which one would you like to wear today? Um, changing the interactions with how you actually speak to them. And this is important for both parents and educators to really make sure that you're brief, that you don't go long-winded. I mean, I'm a little long-winded, but when you talk to these kids, you have to be very brief so that they can, uh, they can actually focus on what you're saying. You want to use goals with rewards so they have something to look forward to. A lot of um, getting kids involved in arts or sports is really beneficial for them, which kind of goes along with the last one, help them discover a talent. That can be hugely a huge benefit for them because it's something they enjoy doing, so they want to focus on it. Um, discipline is important. These kids, just because they have this disorder, they definitely need discipline, and they need it more in a way that you are taking away the things that they enjoy. Um, maybe not putting them in a corner because they're not going to be able to stay in the corner, and then you're going to get frustrated and yell at them even more. So maybe you know, saying not really time out, but okay, you're gonna lose your privileges for your computer and your Game Boy. Do they have Game Boys still? <laughs> well, you guys know what I mean. And so you're gonna lose the privileges for those things. Um, and so keeping that in mind. Um, and then alternate therapies, I just wanna briefly talk about this because I think some of the other speakers are gonna cover this, but I have to give a plug on this from a medical standpoint because I get a lot of parents that ask me about these things, and I do practice evidence-based medicine, meaning anything that's been proven, and if it hasn't, I go and I do the research. So I just wanna present this from an evidence-based manner, and again, that doesn't mean that these things can't work, it means that so far they may not have been proven to work for most people. So screen time and diet, screen time. I talk to my parents about kids should not be in front of any screen for more than two hours a day. The average American right now is sitting in front of the TV for seven hours a day. Seven hours, which is alarming. Um, screen time has not been directly related. So even though we're saying, no, you shouldn't do that, it hasn't been linked to the development of this disease. Diet, there's a big push. I'm gonna talk about the um, Fiendville diet here in a minute, but diet, no, has not been linked to the development of this disease. The Fingal diet I want to um, just briefly talk about because if you Google, and everybody Googles everything now, right? So if you Google ADHD, this comes up. Um, and this is this guy presented this research in the 1980s that said, well, some people are really sensitive to aspirin-containing products or things with artificial flavors or preservatives. Aspartame is a big one, which is found in our diet sodas. And so maybe that's related to it. His studies at the time did actually show that when he eliminated this from some kids' diets, their behavior drastically improved. But further studies after that have not proven that at all. So is it worth a try? Maybe. But is it gonna, is it gonna turn out to be the answer? Maybe not. Supplements, um, again, this is a big push right now. Um, essential fatty acids are omega-3 and omega-6, like the nutritional supplements, vit vitamins, ginkgo, biloba. None of those have been proven to actually help in ADHD. Sensory integration, I just wanna, um, I just wanna mention that's a, an occupational therapy um, thing that the school systems sometimes offer, but it's not necessarily effective for just ADHD. It's usually seen with kids that um, suffer from Asperger's or autism. Um, so this is not specific to ADHD either. Interactive metronome training is a promising um, alternate therapy. The studies right now are very promising. This is kind of along the lines of what a musician does where they follow a beat. 
there is a group in Grand Rapids that's doing this kind of therapy, and I have several children that are attending that are doing very well off of medications and just doing this therapy. And again, the studies that are out right now have been really promising with this. And the other things that I listed on the bottom there also have not been shown to be beneficial. I want to briefly just talk about chiropractic because I probably get that question once a week right now in my office. If a parent can bring their child in to have chiropractic treatment, will that help? The studies are not showing that it will. And I always caution parents, I am all for chiropractic treatment, but I will caution parents they need to find someone that is comfortable with children and is trained in children's chiropractic because that doesn't come without risk, of course. So is it gonna help their ADHD? Probably not, um, but if it makes the child feel better, I'm all for it as long as the person is trained appropriately. These are just um, some websites, the CDC, uh, is a great resource. They have a number of, of great things. Um, the help for ADHD.org answers a lot of <coughs> burning questions about all sorts of things, and they have great links to other research articles and things like that, so that's a very user-friendly site. And then, of course, these professional organ organizations that nobody ever really wants to look into unless you're me, and so I just listed those because they're important in my field. So, and um, that's all I have from a medical standpoint. I know we have a lot of other great information, and I talked really fast. So I'll be around for questions afterwards.